Yeah, the title of uh, this presentation is uh, Comprehensive Analysis of uh, Viscosity Measurements. <clears throat> so basically, uh, we took in in depth uh, a look at the simple test run in, in every foundry in order to identify and minimize uh, variation that is uh, inherent in, in these tests. So, um, yeah, let me quickly introduce um, myself. Um, my name is uh, Bastian Schulte, and uh, I'm a Bachelor of Engineering for Light uh, Material Technology, and I'm uh, specialized in uh, casting technologies. Uh, this uh, bachelor is uh, from the uni University in uh, Duisburg Essen in Germany. And um, yeah, I joined the uh, R&R team in uh, 2019 as an uh, application engineer. And uh, yeah, I'm providing technical support to uh, R&R ceramic shell customers. Um, further, I provide uh, comprehensive uh, product solutions and uh, also troubleshooting process issues. Uh, I'm responsible for uh, R&R customers uh, throughout Western Europe, um, but uh, excluding uh, the UK, the Benelux and uh, Scandinavia. This is uh, covered by uh, my colleague, Karl Wechmann. Uh, you may know him. <laughs> he uh, also hold, held a webinar during this series. And uh, yeah, I want to tell you, prior to, to joining the uh, team at r, &R I worked for uh, yeah <laughs> now over twenty years in, in different positions uh, like as a production engineer, a development engineer, uh, directly at forefront in the foundries. I mean, I started in the in the age of uh, fifteen to by by working in the foundry as a normal worker, and went through uh, almost every education steps that are possible in the German foundry business. So. Yeah, I have a lot of hands-on uh, experiences, uh, I want to say, and uh, this is uh, this was also beneficial for me, and uh, uh, in the final end, also beneficial for uh, R&R customers, which are where I'm uh, responsible for. So now I want to go through the agenda of this uh, presentation, and uh, this will go as follows. Um, first of all, we will go through the background of the uh, amount of variables tested. Um, we will then move uh, into the purpose and uh, methodology, so the why and how. Um, we will then discuss the results, uh, which are broken up by variables tested. I will uh, give you then the best technical tips, and uh, finally, we will make conclusions about the data presented. <laughs> and wrap it all up uh, before acknowledging uh, those who helped us uh, make this all possible. So, purpose of uh, this paper is um, to present you uh, a comprehensive analysis on uh, impact of the, uh, yeah, the equipment, uh, the method, and op operation operator variations uh, to accuracy and precision of uh, viscosity measure measurements. And um, all of this is uh, based on a technical paper from uh, my colleagues uh, in the States held for the uh, ICI in uh, 2019. And uh, yes, we, we want to evaluate uh, the results from uh, various flow caps, endpoints, operators, uh, also slurry types. Um, this was done to conclude uh, best practice uh, methods and equipment for uh, repeatable repeatability of uh, viscosity measurements. Uh, and for finally, also to present a correlation of uh, methods and uh, equipment for cross-referencing measurements. So let's start. What is, uh, what is viscosity? Scientifically, it's a material's resistance to flow. Uh, so, in, in real world, it's a thickness or thinness of a fluid. This can be measured in uh, two ways. It's, uh, first, it's a dynamic viscosity. It's a resistance to flow with external force on it. And second is a kinematic viscosity. This means the ability to flow under the weight of gravity. Considering the tools that are used to measure viscosity in a foundry, 
We will be today focusing on the kinematic viscosity for the purpose of the paper. Uh, as you know, the slurry viscosity will affect how a slurry will penetrate, coat, and drain off a shell. A thinner slurry will, will be able to penetrate, coat, and drain off a shell way quicker, but it will be more difficult to uh, create an even coating all around. A thicker slurry, on the other hand, may suffer when it uh, comes to penetrating through and draining off of a shell, uh, but it will be less suitable to, to coat dis disproportionately across an entire pattern. So, to summarize, a change in viscosity may, may directly affect the dipping and draining se sequence in your foundry, and in turn, change the final characteristics of a shell after all dipping is complete. So, how do we measure viscosity in our foundries? In a foundry setting, a viscosity flow cup is typically used. Um, as you can see on this slide, uh, there are a handful of different cups available on the market, and even some, some more uh, self-made from uh, some customers, but uh, we want to focus uh, on uh, the standard cups uh, on the market. So the most common are uh, the ZAN cups uh, that, that come in both, the Signature and uh, also the EZ varieties. These two have uh, slightly different shapes and sizes, uh, but they're on a one to five scale where one is the smallest hole and five is the largest. The ISO cups are a little more rare, but, but serve the same purpose. Uh, they are also characterized by the diameter of the hole. On the ISO Mini 6, they uh, range from 2 to 6 millimeters, while on the ISO Cup, they uh, range up to 8 millimeters. The standard ISO Cup also does not have a handle, so it uh, requires a different procedure and is really rarely seen in the foundry due to the complexity of it. And uh, so due to these factors, we, we did not use it in our testing, but I just want to put it in because it is uh, another option available on the market. And um, so how is uh, measurement taken of the viscosity in the foundry? <laughs> Let me say these are... Uh, Technically, not, not viscosity measurements, but uh, it is a measure of the efflux of time uh, of a slurry through the hole in the bottom of a cup. That's what it is. And uh, to measure this, um, we will start by inserting a clean, dry flow cup into the slurry in order to, to completely fill the cup. Uh, it is then emptied so that the cup is fully wetted. This is very important because we want to make sure that we are testing the slurry against itself and uh, not, not slurry against the cup. So just keep this in mind. It's, um, and uh, after the cup is fully wetted, we will uh, then reinsert it into the, into the slurry. And as the cup is removed and clears uh, the, the top of the slurry, a stopwatch is started. Be sure to, to hold the cup vertically to ensure even flow out of the cup. And once the draining endpoint is reached, stop the stopwatch and record the time. That's the way. So and, uh, based on, the, on this procedure, there are three different endpoints that can be utilized. I, I want to show them to you now. The first endpoint is uh, through the hole. And um, this is read by looking directly down through the cup. And uh, when light can be seen through the hole, the test is complete. Second is the, the one inch below. Uh, it's measured by stopping the stopwatch when the stream flowing out of the bottom of the cup is no longer steady. One inch below the bottom of the cup. And the third one is a break at the bottom. This follows the same idea. 
uh, except the test is complete when the stream makes a clean break at the bottom of the cup. But, but why do we viscosity testing this way and not something possibly more accurate? First of all, this, this method is, is fast, it's very fast. Uh, typically, this, this, test, this test can be uh, completed in, uh, in under a minute, making it an easy go, no-go test that uh, can be performed in the shell room directly. And second, <laughs> the tools are readily available. All that is needed is a flow cup and a stopwatch. And um, third reason is uh, the results are easy to interpret. The efflux time will let the operator know whether or not the slurry is within the given viscosity range and gives them a general idea of how to fix it if it is out of range. Obviously, for sure, there's uh, more complexity to an addition, but at least it gives you a point to begin. And uh, finally, there's very little training required to, to learn how to take viscosity. And the, the training can be done in under five minutes, normally, just because it's simple and does not take long. So, so many tests can be done in a row in order to get uh, comfortable with the process. Easy to train to, to new, new employees. Um, so th that's why we do it uh, this way. So the four potential variation elements that, that uh, we explored are the cups, the endpoints, slurries, and the operators during this evaluation. The cups add variation in the whole size as uh, each cup design has different sizes. The condition of the cups also play, play an important role because they, they wear over time with use and the manner in which they are maintained plays a huge role. If they are used and only rinsed off, they may wear much faster than a cup that is uh, rinsed, dried and kept with its cap on in the container that it arrived in. It's, uh, so take, take care of the maintenance uh, of your cups. The endpoints uh, also can uh, contribute a, a large amount of variation. For example, the, the one inch below test can vary from person to person because unless the, the inch is measured, everyone may have a, a different idea what, what an inch is. So you, you have to, to make clear what, what you are talking about uh, through your team. And uh, at least um, the, the slurry is, uh, is also another factor in the variation among readings. Uh, this can be affected by, by any additives, uh, whether it's polymer, fiber, etc., which will in turn uh, affect uh, the rheology of the slurry. And that, uh, on the other hand, uh, affects how it flows around and uh, out of the cup, altering how the endpoints of the test will be interpreted. So last but not least, um, the operators are humans. So no matter how much practice they get, uh, they cannot be perfect. It's impossible. <laughs> so there will be always an inherent level of variation in that case because the human reaction time can, can only be so fast when starting and stopping the test, as well as determining the endpoints. So in case of this experiment we did, uh, we used uh, trained technical staff to, to contact, conduct the testing. So on, uh, on this slide, I will show you the uh, variables that we have tested. Um, so we, op we have evaluated uh, four different operators. Uh, as I told you, we were all uh, trained technical staff. Uh, three types of uh, flow cups, the Sun Signature 5, the Sun EZ5, and um, at least the ISO Mini 6. 
um, further three endpoints so through the hole, the one inch below and break at the bottom method. And uh, we checked uh, also two slurries. Uh, one uh, was a polymer backup. And the second was a polymer plus fiber backup slurry. And uh, at all uh, five loadings per, per slurry. So five for the polymer and backup and five for polymer plus fiber backup. And uh, yeah, loading is uh, the L1 was, uh, was the sickest. Um, slurry and uh, loading five was was the thinnest slurry and his tests and uh, yeah all of these variables combined uh, generated uh, 2800 different data points uh, that range across the swath of uh, of tests so <laughs> let me tell you in total the readings took uh, nearly 13 hours alone to complete just for the readings So, and our, our method, our experimental method um, was as follows. Uh, we always ensure uh, slurry homogeneity. Uh, this was done by taking uh, 10 readings across uh, various locations in the tank. And uh, if all 10 readings were within one second of each other, the slurry was uh, considerate, uh, homogeneous, and uh, testing could start. Um, next thing, and this is uh, very important, um, the operators only knew the cup and the endpoints, um, and the times were collected by showing the stopwatch to another person who was recording the times in the spreadsheet. So, the operator, uh, each operator would take 10 viscosity readings. Um, after that, they would uh, wash out and dry the cup and then hand off to the next operator so that they can take their 10 readings. After each operator had taken the readings with a set of uh, given variables, for example, cup and endpoint, a new set of variables would be introduced, a new cup or a new endpoint. So uh, this was done uh, until all cups and endpoints have been exhausted. After we made the liquid addition, stabilize the slurry and repeat the whole testing. The liquid addition was a combination of uh, binder concentrate and uh, water in the same proportion as they were at uh, slurry makeup. And only enough liquid uh, was added in order to, to bring the viscosity down to, to a set amount. The slurry was, um, after the addition, uh, left to mix for uh, half an hour to ensure slurmer, slurry homogeneity again. And once all five of the loadings were completed with the slurry, a new slurry was then built with the fiber add additive and the whole testing would start again. So we did our best to minimize outside variation that was not already present within the process in order to present the most accurate data. So brand new flow cups were purchased uh, in order to eliminate the, the effect that uh, continued use would have on a, flu on a new, uh, on a flow cup. So um, we followed always the same procedure when, when making up each slurry and ensured the slurry homogeneity uh, before the beginning of each set of the tests. And uh, during testing, all readings uh, were also taken from uh, the same location in the tank. And, and lastly, uh, as I told you before, the trained operators did not see the times that, were, that they were uh, recording. This was uh, to reduce any bias that uh, may come from knowing what the previous reading was and trying to match it in, in order to, do, to be consistent. I mean, honestly, it was not a lot of uh, fun taking 2,800 uh, viscosity measurements. <laughs> so, and um, yeah, all the three uh, variables that, that were tested were uh, 
evaluated using the standard deviation of uh, the viscosity readings. So for operators, it uh, was individual versus all operators combined. For the cups, it was uh, all three head to head. And for the endpoint, the two ZAN cups were uh, evaluated with all three methods. Well, the ISO Mini 6 was uh, only evaluated for break at the bottom because that's the only way the ISO, cup, ISO Mini cup uh, works. So, and um, in order to evaluate the operators, they were uh, first compared against themselves and then against the whole group. Uh, when compared against themselves, it was uh, evaluating precision. But when compared against all other operators, it was evaluating accuracy. So over the next two slides, um, we're going to, the, going to look at uh, some of the data collected through our testing. Um, what we will see is that uh, individually, each operator is uh, consistent. But uh, when readings from all four operators are compared against uh, each other, more variation comes through. So, in short, this means um, there's precision, but uh, less accuracy. So, on this slide, you can see uh, all, all operators, data and uh, consistency. So, a complete overview of, of all variations from, from the operators, caps, methods, so you, you can see in the, in the upper row the the cups and methods um, and the left uh, the operators uh, one to four and um, yeah this is uh, all summarized uh, along with um, operators uh, overall standard deviation and uh, and the overall average so an in that look uh, of, of, of all the uh, standard deviations of uh, caps and operators. And um, on the next slide, these are, uh, these are some data, uh, or it's the same data, but it's, uh, it's another slurry. This is, uh, in this case, it's a uh, polymer plus fiber slurry. And as you can see, the, the deviations are nearly double that, that what they were for uh, the polymers, polymer slurry. I will quickly went one, one back so that you can, can see this. So, yeah. For example, look at the overall average of uh, signature through the hole at uh, 0.17 and see it uh, for the polymer plus fiber slurry at uh, 0.31. So, what does this mean? So, um, the operator average uh, would be an indication of uh, how precise the measurements are. This would be similar to, to only have uh, one operator taking viscosity at the facility. So they are only being compared to their own measurements. And um, the overall average, on the other hand, is an uh, indication of how accurate the measurements are. For example, this would be an indicator that three different operators work in the, in the plant over three shifts, and all measurements of all operators are compared. What's the reason for this uh, discrepancy between these two? Um, I will show this to you on the next two slides uh, uh, graphically. So on this, this slide, um, it, it shows a good agreement across the four operators. 
as you can see on the uh, y-axis is the efflux time in uh, seconds and on the x-axis it's uh, just the measurement number so if you look at uh, at the scale all 40 readings are uh, within 0.6 seconds of each other uh, with most being within uh, 0.3 seconds so all of the readings were consistent on a singular operator scale. This is what makes precise and uh, all four operator readings uh, were about the same. So makes it accurate as well. On the other hand, this graph uh, shows how, how there can be a large difference between the, the, div, the, the deviation of each operator versus all, all four operators' deviations together. This is a much bigger scale, but each operator was fairly consistent on their own. So when looking at the operators together, there is a large difference uh, between each one, especially the highest and the lowest. So this is where the difference uh, between the operator and the uh, overall average is lies. So the endpoint uh, utilized uh, was another factor that affected how precise and accurate the measurements were for all operators. Shown on this table uh, are the deviations uh, across all cups, readings, operators, and slurries for each of the three endpoints. Through the hole and break at the bottom were the most uh, consistent methods tested, as they had the lowest deviation, whereas uh, one inch below was the most inconsistent. This chart also shows the strong contrast, contrast between the two slurries and, and how their rheology affect the taking of measurements. But how would this data chart applied to your foundry. It's, um, a statistical outlier is uh, outside of the range of three standard deviations from the median. So if you multiply the deviations from the previous chart by three, you would get uh, the variation from each endpoint. Considering most foundries have uh, a two to three second range of their viscosities on uh, any given slurry you can see in this chart that uh, most of these vary more in one direction than the viscosity range allows so for best practice it would be best to to minimize the variation from the endpoint um, by using break at the bottom or even through the hole because um, break at the bottom and through the hole are the most consistent and accurate methods. Our test showed this, showed this uh, clearly, whereas the one inch below had uh, much more interpretation to it. Um, let me say through the hole did have some sub subjectivity to it, but um, only, only at higher viscosities with the polymer plus fiber slurry where well, the hole took much longer to open. So, this table shows us um, the comparison in uh, standard deviations between slurries uh, across all three flow caps, uh, regardless of uh, operator or endpoint. For the polymer slurry, the readings by all, all four operators uh, are much closer together, uh, resulting in a lower overall deviation across uh, the caps. And uh, in comparison, the readings of the polymer plus fiber slurry were uh, more spread out, almost double in, in most cases. An exception was the ISO Mini 6 cap, uh, which showed an increase of about 50%. Um, because of this, the ISO cap showed uh, greater accuracy over the uh, 
to other cups, no matter which uh, slurry or loading. Um, the addition of fiber slightly changed uh, the slurry rheology, and that uh, affected the way that the slurry acted at this, uh, as it flowed through the hole in the cup. This uh, made it more difficult to, to determine the, the exact endpoint of the test in, in real world. So, but one interesting point um, to be made is that across, across the loadings, uh, it was difficult to define the endpoint when viscosity was higher. In general, there is a positive correlation between uh, viscosity and deviation. The higher the viscosity, the higher the deviation and reverse. So this uh, sheet shows an example of it, of this. And it has the data for the deviation for the three cups over five loadings of the polymer plus fiber slurry. And as you can see, it is difficult to be accurate with the SAN Signature 5 and SAN EZ Cup uh, 5 at higher viscosities. The ISO Mini 6 Cup is uh, way more consistent at, at the wide range um, and only at the lowest viscosity it's a bit less accurate uh, than the other two. So. We can say that, that the, these data uh, confirms what uh, industry uh, noticed since, since years, that uh, viscosity readings uh, vary by operators and points and cups in, in each foundry, in each shift. And so in a foundry setting where uh, multiple operators are taking viscosities on slurry, on slurries, the uh, ISO Mini 6 cup is, uh, from our point of view, the best option. It's consistently had the lowest deviations amongst operators uh, when compared to other cups. It, it also maintains um, a low deviation across the tested viscosity ranges. But I have to say, an, um, an ISO Mini 6 cup is roughly two to three times are more costly or expensive than a Zahn Signature 5 or even a Zahn EZ 5 cup. But uh, it's also more robust than, uh, than the uh, Zahn cups. So, but when you use a, a Zahn Signature 5 or a Zahn EZ 5, um, the variation um, is reduced by employing the through the whole method. So you can improve um, your viscosity measurements by switching to the through the whole method if you do not want to buy uh, a new set of uh, ISO Mini 6 cups. So the data showed uh, a real world difference between the uh, published uh, viscosity uh, equivalency charts and uh, actual slurry viscosity correlations. So the published uh, charts, they are based on uh, tightly controlled and, and calibrated oils. Um, while this testing at R&R was uh, conducted uh, using ceramic slurries. So using our data, um, we produced a uh, way more realistic uh, charts for um, converting uh, between different flow caps and, uh, and endpoints. Um, if you're interested in, uh, you can find uh, copies on our website at uh, ransom-randolph.com and uh, go to technical tips where you can additionally find uh, much more technical tips um, that uh, are, they are very beneficial uh, for your daily work. So please take a look on our website. 
and uh, but I will show you now this um, um, viscosity correlation chart. So this is a part of the chart for the polymer plus fiber slurry. Um, we use the ZAN signature through the hole as the basis and uh, correlated the other endpoint values from it. So again, if you would like to have the copy of these, uh, of these uh, two charts, we have one for polymer slurry and uh, one for polymer plus fiber slurry, please go to renzen-randolph.com and uh, take a look at our technical tips. Finally, I uh, want to give you a, a best practice tip. tip. So for uh, viscosity measurement uh, in your plant, uh, please, uh, please always specify where to read uh, the viscosity in the tank. Um, we suggest uh, right behind the plow, at, uh, as you can see at the, the red X. So, uh, and please investigate uh, the viscosity profile uh, across the whole tank, uh, the tank surface, um, because the variation should be uh, minimal. Otherwise, you, you have to to improve um, yeah, your mixing speed or your uh, pedal design. Um, so that you can be sure that you have uh, always a homogeneous, uh, stable slurry in your tank um, before dipping. So another important tip is uh, to have uh, two set of cups. So um, one floor cup and uh, one supervisor cup and uh, so that you can do on a regular basis, uh, basis um, uh, that the supervisor can can check check the slurries with uh, both cups, the floor cups and the supervisor cups, and uh, record. So because uh, floor cup floor cups uh, wear way faster than than the supervisor cups, uh, so. And they are more handled, so they they were dinged, dropped, and um, so reading can change. And um, if you see a vari variation between the floor and the supervisor cups, um, please please swap out the floor cups uh, with supervisor cups. Purchase a new set of uh, supervisor cups and uh, establish a correlation between these cups. So, finally, uh, you need to specify uh, your viscosity cup type so th that you have the right type for your slurry. Uh, you also have to specify the, the cup number. Um, specify the location in the tank where to take the reading, as I told you before. Um, also specify the endpoint for, for all, and this is uh, for all operators the location, the endpoint. Um, what you also have to consider is uh, define the number of readings per test. Um, set a lowable variation between the readings and uh, finally and uh, most important, um, define how to clean the cup and uh, store the cup between between your testing. So please uh, clean it in water and uh, yeah in best case store it in uh, dry cases in in the container you uh, receive the cup in so it is uh, to guarantee that it is always in best conditions so and uh, yeah i want to end up uh, with uh, some acknowledgements um i would like uh, or first uh, want to acknowledge um Mike Henricks, uh, Dave Berta, Sam Duncan, and uh, Sam Jeffrey for, for helping uh, putting all the data uh, together and uh, setting or getting this idea for, for this paper. And uh, yeah, 
working on the data, uh, the whole testing. And um, yeah, finally, I'll, I also want to uh, acknowledge uh, our market, marketing team. It's uh, Marty Junor and uh, Alisa Roski for uh, helping us uh, proofread and um, edit this paper. So, and lastly, I would also like to thank you for uh, for listening to uh, my presentation today. And uh, if there are any questions uh, at this, this time, you may come forward and ask, and uh, I will do my best to answer them. Thank you.